Hey everyone, this is Adam here with you again to discuss another movie. I apologize if I look kind of like rough, disheveled. I just got off work and um, I wanted to do this now, early on, I guess in the night, so I wasn't dead tired by the time we got to, or by the time I got around to it. The movie I want to talk about today is called Borgman. It's a Dutch film by director Alex Van Warmerdam. Um, which I am probably pronounce, pronouncing incorrectly. But this movie, I wanted to talk about this movie in particular because it was on my mind today, um, as it is many days. This this movie really got under my skin. Uh, I watched it about a year ago, maybe longer than that, and it, it just nonstop pops up into my head, and I'll think about it for about an hour or two before it just goes away. Such an elusive movie, such a, a very enigmatic and mysterious movie. There's a lot there to be, I think, figured out upon multiple viewings. Uh, sort of reminiscent of David Lynch's Mulholland Drive. If you've not seen that film, that's something I'll be discussing in the future. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. But with Borgman, um, it's described as a dark suburban fable and I think that is very, very accurate, very appropriate to, um, to say that about the movie. Um, the basic plot sort of focuses on um, a vagrant, um, a man who is found living out in the woods, and uh, this is Borgman, this is Castile Borgman. And he, um, the movie opens with him and, and some fellow vagrants being run out of the woods, and they have to take uh, they have to take shelter somewhere. So Borgman finds this house in a nice residential neighborhood, and sort of forces his way in. Um, and as he continues to be around the family that lives there, which is a young couple and their young children. Um, as Borgman's stay increases, more and more eerie, sort of um, mysterious events begin occurring. Not in like a, a horror movie, haunted house type way, but sort of in a, um, a mythological type way, if that's, if that's accurate to say. It's just, it's so difficult to pinpoint this movie that I, this is why I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to talk it out. I wanted to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to see if maybe someone else who had seen this had some insight into what they thought might be happening here. There's a lot I can't say about the movie, not because it would spoil a plot necessarily, but it would definitely spoil the atmosphere that it creates. Um, this is a movie that doesn't necessarily have a story to tell rather than a mood to create. And I gravitate towards those movies sometimes because they're, they're I think, more complicated to do than to tell a straightforward story. And some movies like Borgman and like um, Terrence Malick's movies, The Tree of Life and, um, and whatnot, just create these moods and these atmospheres for us to live in for a while. I think that's also important in filmmaking. I think that's why I am so keen to talk about this movie too, is because this is a movie, and and maybe it's just me, maybe it's a, a personal thing, it can't be just me, but maybe it's, it's just something that happens with some of the people that watch this movie, but I just, I cannot shake this movie from my, uh, from my mind. It really, it, it sort of did what happens within the film, and brought itself into my environment and just latched on there and sort of kind of uh, meddled with the workings, the inner workings of, of what already was. It, there could be some symbolism here, and I say that strongly believing that there is uh, symbolism here, but to describe that symbolism would again, spoil the atmosphere that the movie itself, I believe, is trying to create. I haven't seen any other of um, 
Alex Van Warmerdam, the director, uh, any more of his works, but I have to imagine that this is probably his best one. The cinematography in here is crisp and clean and hypnotic in a manner that um, just makes you want to keep watching because there's something lurking around the corner that you just have to see, but you don't know if you want to see it, but you really, really want to see it. So I, I hope I've done an all right job of explaining this, even though I haven't really explained anything at all. It's one of those movies that just needs to be experienced more than, um, more than, dis well, not discussed, but more than uh, described. Because it, it it's such a, I, I always find this so funny when I try to tell people that, about this movie because it's such a difficult thing to describe and a difficult thing to um, talk about unless you've watched it and are able to bounce ideas off of another individual. Um, which is why, again, why I'm posting this. I wrote a review of it a while back on my Instagram blog, which is at the films I've seen. Um, and I basically said the same things, a lot of the same things that I said here. In that it's very, very hard to pin down. Very uh, mysterious, but hypnotic in a way that just you can't let go of it. Um, maybe it's the fact in me that I need to know at least a little bit of a semblance of what is going on here, um, or what, what I'm working with, because there are movies out there that, um, for example, there's a movie called Post Tenebris Lux, um, by, uh, a director named Carlos Regatas that I, I saw the preview for that movie and was sold on it from the preview alone. And I watched it and just wasn't too crazy about it. Um, I understood what the director was going for. And I understood, you know, the surreal. I, I guess I appreciated the surreal nature of what he created. But it didn't do much for me in terms of um, affecting me um, emotionally or, or mentally. But Borgman, on the other hand, definitely did. Definitely um, definitely got to me, got under my skin. So if you're a fan of that kind of thing, if you're a fan of, um, surreal, sort of mythical, um, difficult movies, I guess would be a way to put it, because it is a difficult film. It's, it's both difficult to watch and, um, unable to look away from, which is rare, a rare thing for a movie. Um... Normally those sorts of movies that, that do that, they're, they're kind of like train wrecks. They're kind of full of just maybe intense violence or intense, um, just explicit material. And you, the human nature and you wants to look at that and, and be fascinated by that. But, um, Borgman isn't like that. Borgman isn't, um, it doesn't rely on explicit behavior. It's all very implied, very... Um, very subtle uh, behaviors and tones that it sets. And I think that's the power behind that because it's such a hard thing to do in filmmaking is to create this atmosphere that will keep an audience. Um, nine times out of ten, it's a story that carries the audience with it, you know, and you want to see it out from beginning to end because it's a story and, you know, that's how stories work. Um, but with Borgman and with, you know, some other films that do this, um, the, the atmosphere is created and you stick around to just exist in that for a while and see, you know, um, okay, you know, the director's kind of made this to where the, the possibilities are limitless and I just want to see what happens at this point because anything could happen. Um, sort of a wild card movie, if you want to call it that and does not disappoint on any um, any facet of, of what it uh, accomplishes, what happens in, within the movie. So I definitely recommend checking this out. Don't know how available this is on, I don't know how available it is on something like Netflix or uh, Hulu or anything like that, but 
Um, I believe I got the DVD relatively cheap off of Amazon, so... Yeah, it was on... I believe it was on Netflix for a while. So I, I don't know if it still is or not, but... Um, yeah, definitely seek this movie out, and I want to hear your thoughts on it, either on here or on my um, Instagram account. Um, message me about it, comment on here. Um, yeah, I just I want to talk to someone about this movie. It, it really it really shook me. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Got a lot going on right now with my photography, so I'm trying to keep these updated as frequently as possible, um, which is really boiled down to about once a week. Um, and that's okay. That's that's reasonable for me right now, and it's not too much of a hassle. So um, I'm, I'm going to try to continue doing the once a week thing, and um, hopefully that'll just be the sort of thing it does. Um, I'm figuring this whole thing out, the figuring the whole YouTube thing out. It's comfortable for me now. It's not as awkward as it was. It doesn't change the fact that I have an awkward personality, but it, it definitely helps that I'm getting used to this sort of thing. So, And I've gotten great feedback. I appreciate the great feedback that you guys have given. Um, any followers that might have found me, any uh, of my friends that check this out, thank you guys so much for the support, and I will continue to try to do my best on this. Till next time, guys. Thanks.